Good afternoon and welcome to episode 718. Um, still more stuff to share. <laughs> the, con the topic today is the power of self-honoring choices and the value too. I'll explain more about that in a moment. Um, it's very relevant. So before I do that, let me, let me choose myself so you know who I am, then I'll jump in. Get it right way around. Um, hi, my name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out already. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what led to me to this talk starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And now we're at episode 7 of 718. That's a lot. I'm real, it just keeps hitting me every so often, like, that many? But there's always stuff to talk about, as I mentioned. And so today's topic is no different from any other in terms of it's about love and relationships, but also can go beyond that. Particularly about the relationship you have with yourself, because this is about self-honoring choices, the power and the value. So let's jump in, shall we? First of all, what I mean by <coughs> well, say, what I mean by self-honoring choices, to explain what those things are, in case you don't know what the term means, is when you choose for yourself. Oh, that was easy. Okay, done. <laughs> There's more to it than that. Because there are some people who are selfish, where they choose for themselves, screw anybody else. That's not what I'm talking about here. Self-honoring choices, oftentimes, are the choice you make in response to something. You can simply, for example, one of the biggest one of the biggest words in the self-honoring vocabulary is no. For a lot of people, for a lot of people, the ability to say the actual, excuse me, the practice of saying no, not the ability, the practice of saying no to invitations to do things or to demands from other people, is impossible to resist. They will just say yes and do it. The ability to say no is oftentimes a self-honoring choice. So that power is in the ability to really give back to yourself. So when you say no to situations that you would normally by default say yes to, you're taking back in a way your power and your sense of self, which is what self-honoring choices are about. The power of self-honoring choices is that you're basically putting fuel back into yourself and reclaiming who you are. For most people, there's a fear of doing that because again, they feel like they're being egotistical or selfish. But the reality is for most people, when we're out in the world, we oftentimes say yes to things without even realizing it. Or we don't say no enough, so we basically do things by default. This has happened in our political system, for example. Um, I'm not going to go down that path, but that's something to think about when I'm sort of in its context. So the power of self-honoring choices is it basically gives you fuel to become more of who you are. And it gives you autonomy and authority and dominion, yes, all three, over your life from a very profound place because it's not just simply I'm in charge I'm taking care of myself and screwing everybody else again that whole screwing everybody else paradigm which is the egotistical selfish way of doing things this is a way of being a way that integrates into life into the world and into other people's um, interfacing that's a word from a place of respect for yourself first then respect for other people as well self-honoring choices are things are decisions you make that take care of yourself first so you can then interact in the world in a more positive, more fulfilled, and a more holistic way. The value of self-honoring choices is you change your relationship with yourself. Self-honoring choices, for example, saying no to situations you don't want to be part of, starts to rebuild your own self-esteem, your self-support, your self-respect. And so you don't jump into things automatically. There, I, I, maybe I'm speaking for myself, maybe nobody else has done this, but oftentimes did things that I thought would help me fit in better. Or I'd say yes to things that I thought would make me be approved of by other people. That choice, or I should say that opting out, was a default way of living. It wasn't healthy, it wasn't effective, and it wasn't very successful for my own support. In fact, I spent many years in a, in a place of basically in a large way people pleasing which is what the opposite of that is. the opposite of self honoring choices is when you're people pleasing you put yourself second to other people and so the ability to make self honoring choices goes secondary to that so I'm very passionate about making sure people understand that you have the power within your grasp to learn how to love yourself appreciate yourself and make those self honoring choices that fill you up first 
and allow you to have better self-care before you take care of everybody else. I was speaking about this actually yesterday with a friend of mine, which is what inspired this talk today, and then again today I had a conversation with a friend of mine on the phone about this, well, one of the traps we fall into. We have this, we have this bad habit, I would say, just, I'm calling it a habit, of making choices that aren't for our highest good. They're not choices we make for our own self-support, but the choices we make, again, because there's some part of us thinking we need to do something out there to make ourselves feel better. And it's a false approach. It's a deception of ourselves. It doesn't work. Um, I'm going to tell you about my course in a moment because this is part. It's a large part of the course that I'm cre I've created. That this group program, I should say, because being a self-honoring person, being a person who self honors themselves, again, not egotistical and not selfish. Unless you want to talk about the big S self, which is kind of the consciousness of ourselves. But having that ability to be self-honoring. First of all, teach other people how to respect you. Actually, that's secondary. Second, teaches other people how to respect you because when you respect yourself, they can no longer treat you like anything less than who you really are. Because if you let people treat you worse, they will quite often do that. So if you have a self-respect and you have, you're honoring yourself by making self-honoring choices, by saying no to things you don't want to do, versus automatically saying yes, other people will start to learn how to treat you the same way you treat yourself. Well, let me say this from the other point of view. We, as people, train our peop our peop the people around us, friends, family, etc., how to treat us by letting them do that. Meaning that when we don't respect ourselves, and we don't take care of ourselves, and we don't appreciate who we really are, then we end up being in a place where we can be, be, almost be a doormat to other people. We don't, get, we don't respect ourselves, other people won't either. So self-respecting choices, self-honoring choices, are things we do for ourselves that then raise the standard for other people's respect us too. Hi Mary, so what are you saying here? See what you said. Do people get too people pleasing when they are not pleased with themselves or don't know how to be pleased with themselves? I mean, I don't, I, it's not about pleasing. I, I mean the term's people pleasing, but it's a sense of approval seeking more than anything else. So I'd say it's not, so, so what it is is people who do people pleasing is when they're not approving of themselves or actually it's not accurate about that, I don't agree with themselves, is because they think that the approval they need is from somebody out there. I went through that myself, a lot of us have done that. We think that to, we, people please, we, we please other people, we are people pleasers, so we can be approved by other people, be accepted by other people, be respected by other people, because we don't do that for ourselves. Not so much don't know, we just don't do it, because we may not think it's either we, we deserve it or we don't think we're worthy of it. A lot of this stuff comes back to a... Um, Basically, a feeling of, of lack of self-worth. You're welcome, Mary. I'm glad you like the explanation. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, this was a Facebook Live first, so interactions I'm having with people, you won't see. <laughs> I'll tell you about the links at the back end. But the thing I want, the, the piece I want to say about that is worthiness is actually a false label because the belief we're not worthy is a imprinted or self-assigned limiting choice, which is not accurate. We are all worthy, period. The fact we're actually on the planet means we're worthy. That's like a, it's a law like law of gravity. It's like, that's the fact of life. Then we go ahead and proceed to believe we're not worthy and spend the whole time beating ourselves up because of a false belief. It's not true. As a counter, a counteract towards that, self-honoring choices do work to help you have more framing for loving yourself and appreciating yourself. And the thing about it, some people say, well, I shouldn't be that too much because I'll be too egotistical or too selfish or too um, demeaning of other people. The only way to do that is when you don't have the self-esteem in place. Abusers of other people do not have high self-esteem. They're actually doing something out of a pain place. And that's a different topic I don't want to get into because it's really deep and really fast. But when you do self-honoring choice for yourself, when you self-support, and you self-honor. First of all, your remembrance of your worthiness comes to the fore again, because it's never gone, just forgotten. And your ability to true approve of yourself and respect yourself is also included in that package too. One well, I remember hearing about it a long time ago in one of the seminars I took many years ago, which talks about how approval comes in two flavors. Self-approval, others' approval. And if you imagine it like, uh, they have this whole analogy with a cup full of approval stuff. But the thing to talk about is how self-approval is more 
it's like if you want to compare oil viscosities or um, I'll use another one. I was thinking about cooking oils. That wouldn't work. But basically, self-approval oil is very thick oil, whereas other people's approval is a very thin oil, which means thin oil be on the top. But the thick oil means it lasts longer. It's more solid. It holds you in a better place. I don't know if that analogy works or not, but the thing about self-approval is when you do approve of yourself, it doesn't matter what other, what, doesn't matter what other people think of you because that's none, one, none of your business, as I've said that before. But secondly, it doesn't have any impact on you because you already approve of yourself. If somebody gets upset with you, don't take it personally. If somebody loves you, you don't take it personally. As extreme as that is, you're not tied to that as a way of being um, valued. You appreciate the value, that's great. But you don't take it personally because you already have support for yourself. Self-honoring choices are part of that same deal. When you really understand and you approve of yourself and you appreciate what you do and what you appreciate what you say no to and you become a self-honoring person, everything can change. The value of self-honoring, it puts the power back in your own hands. The power of self-honoring is you have control and choice. But the value of it, more than anything else, is you learn to respect and appreciate who you are beyond anything else. It gives you back to yourself. Which is why, one, which is why I've actually just rewrote some of the content on my um, new group program called Coming Home to Yourself. I'm very much becoming clear in my work and as I've done in my messaging for the last few months, talking about how your relationship with yourself is more important than anything else. Love relationships, relationship with other people always have one thing in common, which is you. Your relationship with yourself is more important than anything. And so by loving yourself and honoring choices you make for yourself and making choices that are honorable for yourself as well is our key steps towards having greater appreciation, love and, and joy in who you are which makes you a better person to be around. That's a selfish thing for other people. <laughs> you get to enjoy your company. So the, the coming home to yourself uh, course, which I'll put the link in the comments, is part of that development process I've been creating for, for few people to learn how to love and support themselves in ways they may never have thought of before. And then by the side effect, all of their other relationships will transform as part of it. So having that self-centric approach first creates an improvement in all the relationships around you and everything changes for the better. You gotta take the steps though. So as a reminder, I'm gonna put the link in the comments for the coming home to yourself, my new course. It's a group course that I put together that's gonna, that it really is anchored in self-supportive, self-aligned and self-honoring choices. That tied together nicely. So um, I hope this is making sense. And if there's something you have some challenges with, reach out to me. I can help you with this. This is a really powerful, I want to say technology. It's a powerful teaching because it's very simple in a way, but so, so um, elusive for some people. This is how your life can work more effectively. And it's amazing how your life will transform when you make self honoring choices in so many ways. So I hope this makes sense. Um, this, is, this is part of my reminder, my, my encouragement, my... Um, appreciation of what you can be capable of in my work. I talk about this more often. Again, it seems my market is shifting more and more towards self-relationship before other people relationship. So if you're with me on this ride, you know what's going on. I do appreciate you watching this broadcast. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, again, I put the link in the comments for the self-love, sorry, for the coming home to yourself course. And I'm gonna do that. Um, and this is one of my ongoing series, so replay so you can find me. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook. If you find the button somewhere around the screen or somewhere around this, unless you get notified next time I go live, you'll be notified before I go, when I go live next time. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week, which is why I'm now at 718 broadcasts. And I'm here to help. Um, the replays for this, you'll find, sorry, the live broadcast from my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays are on business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author, and also my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. There is a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, where all of these live. This is one of many topics I talk about because, frankly, there's so much to explore in this area, and I feel like more and more that the self-centric and the self-supportive practices are where the real work is. So, I decided not to hide behind. Let me get you find find love out there. Now, focus on helping you find love inside. 
So if that makes sense, I appreciate you reaching out for support if you want it. And again, I put the link in the comments for my coming home to yourself, which I highly recommend you check it out. It's something very special that I'm launching very shortly as soon as I have enough people coming into play. I thank you for being with me as always. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And any questions, thoughts, please point it below and respond when I sign off. And again, if you want some help, message me over social media and I'll be happy to reach out, reach back to you. Um, that is about it. Oh, a little bit of homework. Why not? Give me homework. Your homework between now and tomorrow's broadcast, if you so choose to take it on, is figure out for yourself what a, what one powerful self-honoring choice is you could make. Maybe it's saying no to something. Maybe it's saying yes to something else. Maybe it's putting into motion something you've been wanting to do. Maybe it's taking time away to take care of yourself. So, hi Brenda, nice to see you. You appreciate my comments today. You can do more work in this area, I understand. And thank you as well. You might want to check out my Getting Coming Home to Yourself because this is a part of that course. So I'm dropping little hints and seeds along the way. Um, and thanks for watching. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, as always. And uh, take care of yourself. Bye.